Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today at Founder Fridays. My name is Sami Kizilbash, and I'm the global head of the Accelerator and Experts programs at Google. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking to all of you about a topic that's very dear to my heart, considerations for managing and growing international teams. But first, uh, I'll share a little bit about myself. Now, uh, I've had the great privilege of working in a range of industries around the world, and I've managed eight teams in different company settings. Over my past 10 years at Google, I spent the last three as a coach to other managers, while I myself managed three teams distributed all around the world. All the while, I'm sitting in Singapore, and that's been the case, especially over the past few COVID years. Uh, and thus, this topic. Let's, uh, let's go quickly through an agenda here. Firstly, I wanna convince you why this is more important, this topic, than ever. Uh, I wanna share some of the tips that I've learned on team structure, on communication, connectedness, motivation, cultural differences, and, and finally, picking the right tools for the job. So let's get started. This is more important than ever, frankly. Um, yes, the pandemic has encouraged all of us uh, to relook at how we think about work. Many of us were forced uh, to work from home, uh, and that meant uh, virtual calls and, and virtual meetings and video meetings and uh, thinking about uh, also, even as we go back into the office and meet others, uh, ensuring safety distances in offices, safety measures. Uh, and uh, it hasn't been the easiest in terms of working together cohesively in a lot of places around the world. And, and keeping in mind that each country around the world has been going through this uh, and dealing with this pandemic in different ways. Um, partially as a result of all of that, the cost of living has gone up, right? There's a lot of economic uncertainty right now. Um, and you know the ability for a lot of people to live in, in urban cities and central uh, headquarter, often headquarter uh, type cities is become limited. Uh, and so folks are, are finding other places, alternative places to live and prefer that. And as businesses and entrepreneurs like yourself, like the cost of hiring and, and having offices has gone up uh, tremendously. So that's another thing that's forcing us into a bit more of a virtual and uh, also globally or internationally distributed uh, team environment. Um, but it's come with some upsides. Firstly, uh, I know a lot of entrepreneurs who enjoy having that ability um, to hire the absolute best person for the job, regardless of where they are and whether they can commute uh, to their one physical location in one city, in one country, they're able to get the absolute best talent uh, in the market. So that's a, a huge plus for a lot of people. Um, thanks to the pandemic, uh, a lot of tools to be able to manage teams and communicate amongst teams virtually have improved. And so those are available uh, to entrepreneurs like yourself uh, readily, accessibly, and affordably uh, in most cases. And finally, we're also seeing a, a huge shift in work culture overall. And I won't go into that too, do, too deeply, but um, certainly uh, in new industries like Web3 and blockchain, we're seeing a, a complete uh, evolution uh, and revolution in terms of what it means to be a team. You know, if we can all sit in a Discord server somewhere with avatars, it's not really important uh, who we are, you know, what we look like, what our names are even. In some cases, uh, all that matters is, is getting the work done. So if you have a great platform where the work can be done, it's transparent um, and everybody's accountable. You know, it's another way of thinking about managing teams at scale all around the world. Um, so let me dive into some of the tips that I've learned. Um, firstly, starting with team structure. So with team structure, the first thing I'd ask is, is your team set up for success? And by that, I mean, really, is your team thinking about uh, the, the most important work streams the priority type of operations, uh, whether they're externally facing or internally facing within your organization, and have you made sure that you've got the right leaders um, set up with the right teams, regardless of the international distribution where they're based. That is absolutely fundamental. One of the tools that I've used to improve my team setups is, uh, is a tool called Building a Shared Vision. You can find it uh, on our Rework website. Uh, it's the same tools that we use internally at Google as well, and it helps any business leader uh, or manager uh, establish a shared vision, mission, values, and goals uh, amongst their team members, right? Um, my recommendation once you've established uh, these things 
is then look for ways to break that system. You have to identify and solve your organizational design problems continuously. It's a never ending process. So make sure that your team members also keep that in mind, that you know, the, the structure of your team may change um, sometimes quickly, depending on the environment and the situation. Now, let me share some tips on communication. Firstly, you need to have a lot of different types of meetings when your team is internationally distributed, um, the same way you would if you were all sitting in one office building somewhere. Um, so of course you're gonna have an all hands where you get to address everybody in your organization. You might have meetings with your direct managers and your leads. You might have uh, less occasional meetings with indirect uh, uh, people on your team. You know, the individual contributors, for example, that you might still wanna check in and give a channel for feedback and, and uh, you know, it could be coaching and support. Uh, you need to think about all these different types of meetings that need to exist and make sure that whatever tool, whatever you're using uh, can support that type of meeting. Um, you wanna make sure they're also two-way type meetings. So that's something I'm gonna talk about uh, in a second here as well. But first, thinking about the types of communication and knowledge channels you have uh, at Google, you know, we, we have video chat meetings, but we also have chat groups, uh, we have one-on-one -on -one direct messaging, um, you know, thinking about what are the tools that are accessible to your team universally, everybody has access to that uh, they use to solve, you know, different moments, different needs uh, across the organization. And finally, uh, sorry, uh, next would be the psychological uh, safety and inclusion. This is something I've had to learn a lot about in the recent years of COVID uh, versus when we were all sitting in person. I think it's, it's a lot easier to help um, people on the team feel safe um, in the environment of the team and to, you know, to feel included when they're physically sitting there with you. But uh, especially if you had a team before COVID and then you started building more team members around the world during COVID, um, they don't have the same sense of team that you might have uh, with those uh, who were there before. And, and making sure that uh, they feel safe to give feedback upwards uh, to you, tell you what's going on, what's going wrong, um, is absolutely critical to your success and your organization's uh, success. You need to think about these things um, and you need to define the team culture. Uh, be proactive about this. Share the guidance. You know, what, what are those values? What is the type of team culture you want to establish regardless of uh, you know, the, where the team is sitting? Um, and then encourage everybody to share their preferences. Hey, if something's urgent, you can ping me anytime. I'll respond whenever I want. You know, time zones are different around the world. Um, when it's convenient for one person to work and send emails, it may not be convenient for the other person to read them. So as long as there's clear understanding in terms of how everybody is working to ensure that the, you know, everybody's efficient and effective, then um, you're set up better for success that way. So communication is critical. Uh, next, Tips on connectedness. I touched on this already. It's so easy when you're all sitting together, but uh, so much harder uh, nowadays in a virtual internationally distributed environment. Um, you need to be, again, intentional uh, about creating a sense of team. Uh, I'll give you some ideas that I have uh, that we've had on, on our team in the past. Uh, it could be uh, buying you know, merchandise like mugs or like uh, smartwatches uh, it could be something, you know, where we're tracking our steps together, some sort of sense that uh, we're doing something, uh, something together. You could create virtual backgrounds for your, your meetings. So everybody has a consistent background uh, and conveying a sense of being part of the same team. That can be a lot of fun. Um, the other thing that you want to do is, um, particularly when you're virtual and you don't have the opportunity to meet each other very often, is create and establish a very strong sense of transparency fairness and empathy across your managers. Transparency in the sense that, um, you know, what your team members don't see about how you make decisions, what you're thinking day, on, uh, day in and day out. When, th when you're working on things and not in front of them, they might be curious. They might be wondering or getting anxious about what you're thinking and things might be changing, things might be moving in times like this. And that anxiety might be growing significantly. The more transparent you can be, about where you are, or, you know, where your thinking is at, where the strategy is headed, what resources might look like, the more transparent you can be, even if you don't know the answers to them, just sharing that you don't know yet can relie relieve a lot of anxiety that can build up on virtual teams over time. Fairness, fairness means so much, um, even when you're an in-person team, when you're 
geographically distributed, fairness can mean a whole bunch of other things. You know, people are in different time zones. Sometimes where, you know, where the manager sits becomes the headquarters for a team uh, and every other time zone uh, doesn't have the same consideration. So they have to kind of follow the manager's time zone. Make sure that people are being fair. Uh, your managers are considering the time zones and when other people are working at their best and, and in, including opportunities for them to, to perform at those times. Um, empathy across managers. Empathy is so important. You know, understanding what is the context of your, your team members in other countries. You know, what's uh, the, the weather like? What's the news, the latest news in the country? What's on everybody's mind in that country? It's not as easy as you might think to feel connected in that way to others. And they won't feel as connected to the team if others aren't thinking about the same things as they are day in and day out uh, as well. So that's a really great way to just create more senses of uh, sense of connectedness. Um, next, I want to talk about motivation, building motivation on the team. First and foremost, one of the things that came, you know, came up for me is that in a virtual environment, not everybody knew you know, what growth looked like for them. It was easy when they could see you know, the next level managers or you know, the, the way that scope uh, in their particular function can grow, uh, and they would be able to interact with those people and know exactly what their jobs kind of look like and, and aspire to doing that. When you're virtual and distributed, it's not as visible uh, to people on your team. And so making sure your managers or yourself are sitting down with them and giving them a very clear picture of, of what success and growth looks like increases your chances of them staying on your team and, and supporting you in the long run. Um, also thinking about, you know, what does your team look forward to doing together? Um, in, in my case, some of my teams like to do virtual games uh, once a week. They'll, before their team meeting, they'll spend about five, 10 minutes just playing some fun word games or, or doing riddles with each other. And um, it sounds cheesy, but you know what? It works. It gets everybody laughing and, you know, they, they end up learning a little bit more about each other. And um, that's hard. Uh, it can be hard. You have to be more intentional uh, about these things in a virtual environment. Um, there's a magic of coaching at Google. I mentioned I, I'm a coach to other managers. Um, encouraging coaching um, uh, within your organization is probably one of the most you know, one of the biggest investments you can make uh, overall. You know, the, the folks who do coach, um, it's a sense of recognition for them, um, but it's also a way um, for them to transfer their knowledge to maybe your more junior or, or your newer recruits uh, on your team. So it's, it's a great way of, of preserving and increasing your overall knowledge base and experience in your organization. And, and finally, um, think about ways that you're rewarding great performance. Uh, one of the ways that uh, I know we can do that at, at Google is providing more flexibility. That might come down to, uh, you know, working hours or, uh, you know, being in an office or not in an office. Um, you need to understand, you know, what drives uh, your best people and, and how you can be flexible with them uh, so they can do, continue to do their best work. All right. Finally, on tips is cultural differences. Um, there's a range of things. Now, when you're working with an international team, it's hard to know. Uh, you know, are hard to be you know, absolutely correct on all of these things, but things to look out for, social norms, um, especially if you have different offices in different countries, the norms within those offices may grow to be quite different. It's really important to understand those norms, um, you know, be empathetic to those norms. And if the norms seem to be going off in some ways or another, finding how can it, your, your team culture, your, your company culture differ, but still be compatible with um, you know, actual country cultures or social cultures around the world. Um, languages, anyone speaking in their second or third language is immediately at a disadvantage. This goes back to fairness that I mentioned earlier. So making sure you're considering this uh, for international team members. Uh, holidays, sometimes, uh, you know, if your headquarter locations, if you're based in the U.S. and you're pinging, yeah, you know, your colleague here in Singapore, for example, on the Singapore National Day, uh, they might feel pressured to work on their day off, but I'm, I'm sure if you, you were aware of that and your team was aware of that, there was some way of communicating that um, to your team. You know, everybody would want them to enjoy their national holiday the same way we, you know, we might in the U.S. as well. Um, so being conscious of that connectivity is really important. Um, you know, a lot of emerging markets, the Internet connectivity, the bandwidth is not as good as it is in a lot of developed markets around the world. So keeping that in mind as you consider uh, communication channels, um, you know, the platforms that you use, the bandwidth that it takes up. Um, 
Finally, labor laws, business-related laws and ethics and practices, and finally, personal privacy laws differ drastically around the world. So you have to be careful what you're asking for, how are you conducting your business, um, and, and who you're sharing what with uh, when it comes to international uh, business uh, best practices and laws. So finally, I'm, I want to end on picking the right tools. And unfortunately uh, for you, I don't actually have this, the best suggestion for you. Um, I, I can only ask you to consider what I've said here in terms of how you want to define your communication, um, your knowledge sharing um, you know, uh, infrastructure. What should that look like? What does it need to be able to support? And then shopping around you know, the, the you know, very common tools out there uh, that are available. Um, you know, at Google, we use Google Workspace. It has a suite of different uh, services from email to chats to calendars that we can make visible to our teammates so that they know what's happening and when we're working and when we're not working. And that works for us. But um, you know, I mentioned Web3 and blockchain projects. You know, some of these teams exist, exist exclusively on you know, Discord servers or, or Slack channels. And, and that works for them, right? It has all the different uh, types of meetings and communication channels that they need to be successful and cohesive as a team. So consider what you want to get out of the team in terms of that communication and um, you know, the knowledge management norms, and then choose the right tool that works for you. Um, finally, think about what your team members all around the world have access to, are most familiar with, you know, or most comfortable with. Sometimes that has a lot to do with whether certain features in a software suite are actually adopted by your team members or not, right? And always remember that you, know, you need to lead by example. So you know, if you keep your video, your camera on during video meetings, um, others on your team are likely to keep their, their camera on. You can see each other and you can, you can show respect by um, showing that you're paying attention to each other. But um, if you choose, not to do that and you're doing voice calls, then that's fine. You may need a different suite um, and you may have a different cadence in which team members are either able to meet in person or not, um, but make the choice. And that's really my final tip here is be intentional about this because the, the worst thing you can do is just let that organically happen over time. Um, let there be multiple different systems being used and having inconsistency across your team. Um, it make it really difficult for you to be successful that way. So I hope this is helpful. Um, good luck out there and thank you for your time.